to Community Cooking. I'm Maria Prekachis, and I'm super excited today. I have Hope Kendell, as we say, in the house. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So I'm looking over everything, and you have some ingredients that people don't use every day. Exactly. Lentils, rice, inexpensive, super healthy, and after today, super delicious, too. Healthy and delicious. Those two can be paired together. They can be, and Hope here is going to show us. I have hope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Had to do it. All right. So what do we start with? We're starting with oil. Okay. Uh, turn that heat on. There I will you go. turn some heat on. About a quarter cup of oil. Okay. Just kind of get that bottom coated. And we got high heat? Uh, medium. Whoa. We got high heat now, baby. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, there you go. And we'll take uh, one medium diced onion. Okay. Pour that in. Let the oil get a little hot, but we can just okay. get that going. And roughly chopped? Yeah, sort of medium dice. Okay. If you want it smaller, you can, you know, you could do it smaller, but I like a medium dice. Nice and easy. I like to be able to see it and taste it. Exactly. And some people don't like that, so that's why I say, and that's a, the beautiful thing about this recipe, is that it could be more or less how you like it. So okay. if you want less garlic, it's fine. If you want more onion, it's fine. All I'm right. Greek. We do lots of garlic. Oh, see, well, I'm not even Greek, but I love yeah. garlic. And it's so. so good for you. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to let that cook down a okay. little bit. Uh, the, uh, the onions have to get translucent. So you can even turn up the heat if you want okay. a little bit, just to kind of make them cook a little bit faster. So they start sizzling. Exactly, exactly. I love cooking onions. It smells, it makes your house so aromatic. It's I know, great. I know. There's just nothing like the smell of onions and garlic cooking. Well, look, we got, we got some sizzle, Hope. We right got some on. sizzle. So, and what I like to do usually is just flavor with a little bit of salt. Okay. I always kind of salt as I go along. The recipe in general, you know, calls for about two to three teaspoons of salt. And you could do it more at the end, more at the beginning, you know, taste as you go. Yeah. Um, again, this dish is really has a lot of versatility and a lot of leeway so and is it it's just in one pot all in one pot god bless you let's clean up we exactly. love that exactly. we love that you can even make it in advance it actually gets better the longer you let it sit the flavors develop a little bit so even when you're done I always say let it sit for five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Okay. But it can even sit for longer. It's not going to go bad if it's on the stove. And pronounce the name of the dish. Majadra. Majadra. I love it. It's so sultry. Good right heavens. On. Yeah. All right, our onions are sizzling away. Right on. So cook them, get them nice and translucent, and then you dump in the garlic. You want me to oh, do that? Oh yes, please. Right on. Just a little bit of garlic. I, I always say between three and five cloves. Mm. And, but I'm always five cloves. Five cloves. I'm We're a five good here. Five girl. Anyway. We're good here. Yeah. Um, so let that. You want the garlic to sort of just start to smell and be fragrant. Okay. Before you put the rice in. Because you, I mean, garlic. You can. I have burned it before, by the way. Yeah, and you don't <laughs> want. Yeah, I, I have too. And you don't want either the onions or the garlic to burn. Okay. Um, so yeah, at this point, you might want to turn medium is great. Okay. Perfect. Oh, it smells so yummy. And now we're doing a cup of rice. Uh, and long grain, long slow grain, cooking rice? Uh, yeah, long grain okay. rice. It can be basmati rice. It could just be straight up long grain rice, whatever you want. Nowadays, there's so much minute rice, but we want the, yeah, the 20 you want minute the or. Slow cooking. Okay. Exactly. And yeah, thanks for stirring that all up. Um, but I'm that's a good what stir. <laughs> you want to stir up the rice, uh, get it nice and coated with the oil. Um, my sense, and I meant to do some research before I came in to do this, but my sense is that when you get that rice nice and coated with the oil, it keeps and retains the form of the rice because we are going to add a lot of veggie stock. Oh, and okay. So what I love about this dish is that even though it's all one pot and even though you're letting it cook and simmer and all that, ideally the rice and lentils should be um, toothsome. They should be to a point where they're still distinct. They're not a total mush. Okay. Okay. Which I like. No mushy rice. Exactly. And no mushy lentils either. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> from right. there, we are going to start with our spices. Oh. We've got a tablespoon of cumin. I love cumin. Yeah, it's great. I and put cumin on a lot of stuff. Right on. Absolutely. I do too. It's kind of like that and salt and pepper sort yeah. of seem to be my go-tos. Mm. That's looking great. 
So here we're going to do about half a teaspoon of allspice. And this is cayenne. And I oh. find that some people, it can make things pretty spicy. So <laughs> start with even if you don't like a lot of spice, start with like an eighth of a teaspoon. But Okay. I, I like, like spice. Okay, so See, I've we got, are kindred spirits. Exactly. I've got half a teaspoon of allspice and a half a teaspoon of cayenne here. Put that in. I'll get that all mixed in so, one, so I don't get one big chunk of cayenne. Exactly, exactly. And a little bit more salt at this point. And I like how the rice gets a little crispy when you do this first. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's, like you said, it, it, it holds its shape. Exactly. And now we're doing a teaspoon of cinnamon. Really? These okay, that's the surprise. The These are like the quintessential Middle Eastern kind of combination. Cinnamon, a little allspice, and more of the savory stuff. Okay. Two bay leaves. And I might add a drop more oil there. It's looking okay. a little dry. Okay. Again, this is the type of dish where you can pretty much, like, if it needs a little bit more liquid, yep. add more liquid. Throw it in. Exactly. All right, exactly. so you have lentils. Now, how do you prepare the lentils oh, and get them like that? Yeah, okay, so you can, this dish works really well with smaller lentils, the traditional green lentils that you might see at a grocery store. doesn't need to be special at all. Um, what I like to do is, as I'm doing my chopping of, you know, garlic, onion, putting mm -hmm. together my spices, that whole mise en place thing, I would take a cup of lentils and just put them in a bowl, cover them with water, and let them sit. That's another beautiful thing about... And that's it. Because I'm always thinking, do you have to cook them for 10 hours? Right. Or what do you have to do? Yeah. eight hours or the night before. No, not lentils. And that's what's really nice about them. They can... You could decide to make this dish when you get home from work. So... We love that. Yeah. So I'm just going to drain the water out. They get a little soft. Oh, that's perfect. a nice little trick with the knife. I know, I know. I was going to say, there's, there's no strainer. strainer. I know, I know. <laughs> So, You've yeah. done this before. I, actually, I'm just thinking. <laughs> Not only I, I make this dish, I probably make this dish once a week. Oh, see? Um, but yeah, when I something's make... good, I always tell people it's all right. Exactly. So I'm okay. going to throw these in. Okay. They're nice and kind of plump and ready to go. And how long do you have them covered in water again? Uh, just for as long as it takes you to prep everything else. That's oh, so not even 30 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, 20 minutes. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, and if you want to turn that down a little bit. Okay. But right, so you're stirring. You're now also coating the lentils. Okay. Uh, so they get a little coated. And we've got about mm. four cups of veggie stock. You can use water. You can use veggie stock. You can use chicken stock. It all depends. This so far is vegetarian so far. Yeah, completely vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I like, you know what, instead of water, I like veggie or chicken stock. I think, I think, I use it in, I use it in everything. Yeah, it has more body. And, yeah. And, um, and actually, what's great about Majadra, too, is that you can serve this as a side if you wanted to pair uh -huh. with the protein. Yeah. It, lentils have a tremendous amount of protein, and they're really healthy. But let's say maybe not everybody in your family or in your sphere. Your circle. <laughs> I like it. In your sphere. In your sphere. You know, wants to eat a full plate of lentils. Okay, yeah. so you could pair it with chicken. You could pair it with, salad, you know, pair it with tofu or seitan, whatever you want to do. So, all right, I'm okay. gonna add the stock. Chicken broth away. I like it. I like having someone on the side to help you stir. Exactly. It's, it makes it fun too. Yeah. That's one job in the kitchen I can hand. Stir. <laughs> And right. from here, it's just sort of medium to low on the stove. Okay. Cover it up, and oh, you're I setting your timer oh. for about 30, 35 minutes. Um, I usually try and check it at about 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, again, just because maybe I need to add a little bit more liquid. I uh, want to make sure that, you know, there, it's not burning at the bottom. Um, the rice isn't getting too mushy. So you okay. can make some adjustments at about at about 30 minutes okay. and usually it needs maybe another five minutes um, and maybe a little bit more liquid but and you can just throw in water at that time so while we're waiting for that to okay what next we're gonna make a kale salad and I love kale because I wanted to make it sort of traditional with uh, Middle Eastern this is again a Middle Eastern dish that I used to eat when also when I was in college very inexpensive six of us would go and be able to eat for like 20 bucks it's yeah awesome but um, I'm going to do the kale salad with a more traditional Lebanese dressing, which is really just 
olive oil, lemon, garlic, Ooh, and yum. salt and pepper. Nice and fresh, keep it pretty light. And see if you could hand me that kale. I love the kale. It's <laughs> and it's so good for you. It is. Really I mean, they're doing everything with kale now. I know. I know. It's 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 pretty amazing. So, with kale, you don't want to use the inner stem. I was going to so, say that's a big stem. Yeah. So I like to just destem it and oh, kind of throw easy. it in the bowl. And we can even take some. I'll come over here too. Oh, well, that's not too bad. I know because sometimes you get salads once in a while from places or from mm -hmm. my kitchen that have some of the stem and it's not fair. Yeah. It's a little hard to taste. And what's really pretty cool is mm -hmm. that if you want to hold on to the stems, put them in a freezer bag, put them in the freezer, and if you are inclined to make stocks, like veggie stocks or something, oh, okay. I was just, say. there's tons of nutrients mm. in that. You can even cut it up and saute it and put it in another so dish if you want to. But I just, for as a raw salad, it's, it's kind of tough. Um, mm. These leaves are tough in and of themselves. Okay. But they're so good. They are good. They're, I like all veggies raw. They're totally, I mean, it's, it couldn't be any more nutritious. Mm. So what we're going to do now is take the kale out. The de-stemmed kale. Thank you. The de-stemmed kale out of the bowl. And we're just going to... Bowl. Yeah. We're using our big words today. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. Oh, I tell ya. And... I sort of feel like, you know, there's a technical term called chiffonade. It means just to kind of cut it into strips and okay. roll it up. Sometimes the leaves are a little unwieldy and they're not as flat as you'd like them to be. So really the main goal is to just chop it all up so that it's in bite-sized pieces. That's okay. really what you want because you don't want a big mouthful of kale. You know, you just want nice, good chop. That's one thing with salads when they bring you like huge leaves. I go, what? I don't want to cut my salad. I just want to eat it. Right. I want right. it to be ready for well, me. Well, and apparently, you know, and I'm like, I don't know who makes these rules, but apparently it's like a faux <laughs> pas to cut your salad. But if you get a big wedge, no, I or know. What are you you're, to do? And if you're out, especially like at a business dinner, lunch, right. you're like, I got to cut my salad. I don't care if it's a faux pas. Exactly. Exactly. Faux pas. Okay. I love that. So then we just kind of put that all in there. Okay. And next comes the massaging of the kale. <laughs> so, Excuse me, I'll leave you alone with that, but <laughs> really. Um, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> but what you want to do is break down a little bit of okay. the fibrous nature and the kind of thick nature of it. So okay. what I like to do is, you could measure it out if you want to, but so about a tablespoon of oil. The idea is that you don't want oil pooling at the bottom of yeah, the Yeah, that... Drives so, me nuts. you know, a little squeezer bottle or just take a tablespoon and start okay. with that and just kind of massage it. Again, you're trying to get it so that each leaf is coated. And, with a little bit. Yeah, and just a little glisteny and, you know, kind of beautiful like that. You and know, some people get paid like 50 bucks an hour for massages. <laughs> is it the same for kale? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, if, if I, I love would, it. You know, if someone would pay me 50 bucks an hour, I'd heck massage yeah, kale, you know? Heck I yeah, mean, Not just for myself. All right, I'm going to just clean off my hands. And that way, though, it does. It gets in all the crevices. It, it, it absorbs into it. And it just softens it up really yeah. nice. And from here, we're going to do a little bit of parsley. I like parsley. I think it keeps things really, really fresh. Um, and, and there I'm, are different types of parsley. There's flat. I'm using a flat leaf. Excuse me. That's OK. She's using her muscles to get the parsley. Oh, there we go. So All flat right. leaf. So flat leaf parsley, really super fresh tasting. I'm sort of like a, you know, all in kind of girl. And so for me, stems. I don't Everything. Know. Yeah, I'm you with know, you. I just, it, it works really well. I, if you don't like stems, you can just focus on the leaves and all of that. But I find the stems actually can be sweeter for certain fresh herbs. Stems can be oh, even really? sweeter than the actual leaf. So if you put it in, I Perfect. don't really think you should waste anything if you if you enjoy it. I like that. I never waste anything on my plate usually. It's usually clean. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. So I'm just chopping this rough chop. It doesn't yep. have to be because it's going I into love that the term, salad. rough chop. I yeah. used to always be like, my tomatoes have to be perfect and tiny, bite size, you know, for a salad. It's like, just chop them up. Exactly. Exactly. I used to get really obsessive about my garlic and I was just like, oh, it's going <laughs> to boil down anyway or simmer down anyway. Yeah. 
So with that, you've got the parsley in there. Now we're going to work on the dressing. Okay, we have the massaged kale we and do. the parsley. <laughs> exactly. All right, I have some lemon and garlic. Exactly. Thank you very much. And with I have okay. And a microplane. That is the cutest little. I call them little zesters. They, it's yeah. really a microplane, but exactly zester microplane. Same. You okay. Know, it's all good. Um, and actually, what I'd love to can I grab one of those forks? Yes. You can grab one of my tasting forks. I have two. I have backup. <laughs> so I just want to kind of stir this up. Okay. It hurts to have the parsley kind of just hanging out. Getting right. a little of the oil on it as well. Exactly. All right. So, so next what we're going to do is, and I'm going to just grab this because this is a little rice wine vinegar. Kind of like a little bit of magic rice wine vinegar. I love rice wine vinegar. Yes. And I love people... If there's one thing, and I don't want to put these people out of business, but make your dressing fresh at home. I know. There's such a difference, and it's so easy, I'm assuming, as you're going to show us. Yeah, absolutely. It's really easy. So you start with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. Uh, yeah, two or three, four tablespoons. There's some kind of ratio between acid and oil. I kind of don't really exactly <laughs> remember all that, but what? You yeah. Know, but it's all good. If you If you taste it and you like it, it's perfect. See, in that, I think dressing really is taste as you go. Yeah. So we're going to squeeze uh, one lemon, ju uh, okay. the juice of one lemon, about three tablespoons. Okay. And hopefully we won't have. I love fresh lemon. I use fresh lemon on everything. It's really great. It just is. It's so good for you, too. It is good for you. And I sometimes usually, I sometimes will zest things. I'll do a little lemon zest, too, on the top of the salad. Well. Which it looks great. It just adds that little bit of something and then adds more flavor too. And it's also pretty aromatic. Yeah. Um, it just, whereas like the lemon juice doesn't have the same kind of aromatic quality. Yep. The lemon zest has real aromatic quality. Okay. All right. So now you have cloves of garlic. Yes. And I know they make all sorts of gadgets to get the outside off. You can peel it. You, what's your <laughs> trick? Honestly, I just. Smash. Smash and dash. Smash it. Peel it off. Now, I don't know about you, but I, if I don't smash it well, I'm like forever just sitting there like peeling <laughs> all the things. Which is layers. okay. It's a little therapeutic. Yeah. But. And what I do from here is I just take, if you've got a nice sort of big size like this, mm -hmm. I'd probably just do one clove. Sometimes as you start using the zester, you kind of, the garlic kind of breaks in yeah. half. And so you may want a second one just to, to work on that. I but have never used garlic on a lemon zester. I love that. That's well, easy. And what I like, why I like to do it, why I like to zest it is because in raw garlic in a dressing can be pretty abrasive. Yeah. And so if you, whoops, I just kind of lost a big chunk in there. But. That's all right. We won't tell. <laughs> but um, so yeah. So we have a fork for that. Right on. Cool. So with the zester, the garlic sort of breaks down enough so that when you stir it into the dressing and whisk the dressing, it you a don't have kind of big chunks of garlic, which is because when you bite into one of those, here I'll take that big it chunk. It softens, out. yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, maybe not. There we go. There you go. You know what? I'll grab it and there you go. Yeah. But because a lot of times you use a garlic press, but it comes out too stringy almost. Yeah. So this is much better because, like you said, there aren't big chunks and exactly. I love that. Exactly. That's awesome. And then from here, what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of oh. Wine vinegar. Nope, rice oh, wine that vinegar. one. I know they look like, similar. Uh, yeah, so just a couple of splashes again, just to. I tend to over vinegar things because I love vinegar. Yeah, but and again, it all comes down to taste. Yep. It all comes down to what okay. you like. A little bit of salt. All right, a little pinch of salt. Yep, and if I could have the pepper, please. Oh, it's hiding over here from you. Yeah. There you go. Oh, and I forgot that it never hurts to add a little bit of salt to the kale. I'm going to do that. Okay. Just because. Salt is, you know, a little bit here and a little bit there is not a bad thing. Exactly. So the dressing, that's it to it? Pretty much. Yeah. That's, that's so it. easy. That's it. You whisk it up. Wait, it's so easy. Emulsify, as they say. I love your big words in the kitchen. <laughs> so whisk it up. Put my smart hat on. Okay. You know. We got a couple of pits in there, but I'm just going to kind of, we'll just deal with those. We'll be okay with them. If All I right. eat one, I'm okay with it. All right. You want to have My a hands taste? are clean. Go for it. Oh, it's just like, you know, that um, kind of vinegar yeah. is great. So the so it tastes good? Yeah. You like the way it is? Yeah, okay, cool. I do. So at this point, what I sometimes say to folks is, you know what? You've made a bunch of dressing. You've got your salad ready to go. 
I feel like dump in half, mix it up, and taste it. And if you like the way it tastes, then you don't need any more. If you want a little bit more, yeah. you know, it's like measure, you know, measure twice, cut once. Well, plus thing. there's already a little bit of oil on the kale, exactly. so I, I'm a big th fan of less is more at the beginning. Yeah. Totally. So we'll do a little. And there's bit. not a lot of dressing there anyway. Yeah, it's um, just kind of to coat it. Yeah. But that's the other thing that I love about kale salads is that. You know, other leaves, other lettuces are mm -hmm. much more delicate. And so you could dress a kale salad and let it sit for a Forever. While. No, yeah. that's a great point. And, you know, my boyfriend works late. And so yep. I don't want to be cooking at 11 o'clock at night. He doesn't get home sometimes till like yep. 11, 30, 12 o'clock. And if I can make something like this and have it ready to go, this could sit for two hours. Even if you put it in the fridge, it's still marinating. It's still getting soft. Well, and, and it's not usually at dinner parties, the salad's the last thing I make. Because, right. oh, you don't want it to well, you want it to be fresh. So I, you've just sold me more on kale. Right on. So I love it. So then we just kind of stir it up. It's such a vibrant green. Yeah. And they say the darker the greens, the better they are for you. So. And not to get too, like matchy matchy here but um, I will say that what I like about the parsley is that it's a little bit of a lighter green yep so there's a yes. little contrast if you're gonna keep a solid simple you know the visual piece is yep. kind of important Ooh, I can smell that it smells so good so there we go we've got that and if you hand me another lemon I've washed them oh you know what we forgot to oh the best part yeah the... well you know Inside. what we'll just do a little bit of garlic oh yeah that's there put the rest of that there and the inside of the zester, of the microplane. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, these are great lemons. Farmer's Market here has so many great things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely beautiful, beautiful. And they're, they're such a difference. They're fresh. They're straight from the farm. Yeah. You can't beat them. You smell, I mean, you can smell with the yeah. skin. You know, yeah, you with the smell. skin on. Exactly. So you've washed these, and then I put my grammy hands all over them. But we'll pretend right, they're clean. Right. So, <laughs> and then, really, oh, do you want to taste this and see yes, if it here. needs more dressing? All right, let me taste a little. Whoops, there we go. I get the biggest piece. It won't be pretty. Mm. <laughs> good? Perfect. All right, so mm. the dressing is good. So we'll just get, add a little bit of lemon zest just to kind of brighten it up. Again, it's that aromatic kind of quality. Mm. And okay, that's so yummy. When you're zesting, yes. you want to sort of avoid, don't zest, don't over zest where you get all the way to the white, <laughs> the pith as they call Do not over zest, people. Yeah, people. Oh, that is so good. I got a little bit of that garlic, too. Yeah, you get a little bit of that hit of garlic. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, less garlic if you find raw garlic to be a little too abrasive. Yeah. But, you know, it's all good. And just stir mm. that up again so you don't get big pieces of zest. Of zest? All Which right. I'm okay with. Big pieces of zest. So we're going to put that off to the side. and. All right, and you were gracious enough. While this continues cooking, I'm going to have it cooking back. Yeah. And like magic, I mean, oh my goodness gracious, <laughs> you went all out. Well, that is, you know. That's Dinner for just a few. Exactly. Well, the great thing about the majadra is that it, mm. um, A, you can cook it well in advance. You can even cook it the day before. The flavors just get oh. really um, kind of, they develop over time, those spices start to, um, you know, break into the onions and the rice and all of that. So make it a couple hours before. If you're going to make it and then serve it, I yes. just like to um, let it sit and cool for about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Just because when it's really hot, you can't taste everything. So, oh, that's um, good. I always burn my tongue, and then you really can't taste anything. Yeah, so. yeah, for the rest of the day, exactly. <laughs> for the rest of the day. All right, so look yeah. at me. I'm ready. So let's plate it up. Let's plate me a little. Majadra. And the bay leaves, by the way, don't eat. Yeah, don't eat the bay leaves. And what I love about this dish is that you can, you could, again, serve it as a main. Uh, for this kind of, with the recipe, this will be about four servings for a main. Okay. About eight servings if it's okay. a side. And you can, again, pair it with all kinds of, um, you can pair it with proteins. You can pair yep. it, you know, but if you're lentils, they're good to go. They've got a lot of protein in them. Do you want me to add some kale salad? Heck yeah. Or I want you to plate it like you would plate it at home. As if I were your guest and sitting and doing nothing while you did all the hard work. But this actually was super easy. Yeah. So, and what a great combination. Yeah, you could. You could put a little chicken on top, but, I mean, it's completely vegetarian. Or mm -hmm. add a little more meat if you want. There you go. Okay. Look at me. 
Majadra. Okay, that's so good. And the spices, wow. Cool. Glad you like it. Are just, I have to take another bite of salad. I'm going to do a little Majadra and kale salad. Okay, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> it's nice actually, for, for these kind of forget holidays. that. Anyway, <laughs> I'll just. <laughs> and you get an arm workout because that, you that do. pot is pretty heavy. <laughs> and even though I don't want I don't mean to call it a stew, but even though it's a, a hot, big pot, you can have it any time of year. Absolutely. You can have, you can actually, I, when I have leftovers the next yeah. morning, I will take that right out of the fridge, maybe let it sit, get room temperature. Yeah. I'll poach an egg, put it on top, poach an egg. I was going to say a little Greek yogurt, oh, a little yeah, poached absolutely. egg. Look, we're okay. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a <laughs> And it's Candel. Thank you so much for oh, coming in today. You. This was Thanks a blast. Me. And easy. We love easy. Yes. Oh, easy thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. I'm Maria Prekertis for Community Cooking, and we'll see you next time. If you would like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations, 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200. That's in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number and the date you saw the show. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. They're located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, give us a call at 310-618-5762 or email us at communitycooking at torrenceca.gov.